Okay, I got it. Okay, sounds good. All right, I think we could get started. Um, let me just pull up my presentation. All right, sounds good. Here we go. I think it's loading. All right, well, first, everybody, thank you for joining us today uh, to talk about our food recovery program. Um, just a little quick background because I'll dive more into it later on um, is that I worked at Smith's grocery store for seven years. Um, I left just recently, but um, I realized working there how much produce goes in the trash. There is um, a ton, even more than some people realize. Um, now some more people are coming in, so I think I'll just slow it down for a second. Um, but Cassie, did you want to say something? Um, you want to talk about climate reality first? Yeah, I just wanted to um, kind of, well, I also wanted to give you a shout out. I wanted to um, kind of explain the context here. So um, like Olivia is going to kind of uh, explain a little bit more of the backstory of how this came about. But um, Olivia really originated this program and is already doing this program at Hearst Smiths. And so what we're trying to do with climate reality is help to elevate that and scale that more. So um, we're really trying to utilize our group and our dedicated and inspired um, leaders and all of our friends um, as well and our network of, um, of climate activists to help um, bring this to more stores and be able to recover more of the produce. Um, as you'll see, um, as Olivia will explain, there's a lot more opportunity to recover produce. And so, um, you know, just to give a little bit of a back um, explanation of what Climate Reality Project is, for those of you that are not part of Climate Reality Project, um, we are a global organization, but we have a local chapter here with over 250 members. And um, what we focus on is solutions to the climate crisis. And um, some of the best solutions, I think, to the climate crisis are those that help to reduce our impact on our environment, like reducing um, materials to the landfill, but that also help people and families become more resilient. And so this is a really, really awesome program where we'll be able to not only help protect our planet, but also help our communities and our neighbors as well. And so um, our chapter, I think I mentioned, is about 250 members now, um, many of, of whom, about half of them, recently completed the Climate Reality Leadership Core training, which is one of the um, uh, our key programs that Climate Reality hosts. And um, Olivia was one of the recent trainees from the June training. And so um, just really excited for this to be kicked off. And thank you so much, Olivia, for kind of sharing your experiences and your um, trials and tribulations with this program already and having something that we can take and really expand throughout our chapter and beyond to um, recover more of this food. So thanks, um, Olivia. And if anybody um, is interested in becoming a chapter member too, feel free to reach out to myself or Olivia as well. Um, but really looking forward to, um, to the presentation and for more people to get involved with this opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, oops. I'm going to go over uh, food waste in grocery stores, give you guys a little bit more background from working there. Um, uh, the Climate Change Connection, my experience, the Zero Hunger, Zero Waste program, and uh, that program also dives into TerraCycle plastic bag recycling. So, I'll talk a little bit about that, but the main focus is going to be the food recovery program. Um, and it's mostly going to be produce food um, because that is the one that's wasted most in grocery stores. And I'm going to tell you how you could get involved. And then also feel free to put a question in the chat um, and then we'll come back to it at the end of the presentation. But you could put it in the chat just so you don't forget. So food waste in grocery stores, according to The Guardian, the food supply chain wastes 45% of all produce, 35% of seafood, 30% of cereals, and 20% of meat and dairy products every year. About 30% of food in U.S. grocery stores is thrown away. U.S. 
Retail stores generate about 16 billion pounds of food waste every year. Uh, that is quite a large number. Um, here it even says 45% of all produce uh, because it is one of the most fresh items that come into the stores. Um, it goes bad extremely quickly. So like I said, why does produce, you know, get thrown away so much? Um, overstocked product displays in grocery stores. We operate under conditions that the assumption of customers are more likely to buy produce from a fully stocked display. Um, so that is overstocking as well as damages to the items of the bottom of the perfectly constructed food pyramids. Expectations of cosmetic perfection, that's on the customers um, because we've been trained to expect perfect, identically shaped produce. Retail stocks their produce according to that expectation. So even if the size, shape, and color have nothing to do with the quality, it gets thrown away or um, marked it down. So that's what sell-by dates are. So when um, consumers and many sellers wrongly assume that food is no longer good after certain days, so expiration dates, um, instead sell-by dates are guidelines for sellers to indicate peak of freshness. Most foods are no longer good after sell-by date. Um, but we do know some items are still edible after sell by dates. Um, for Smith, you would have to mark a item down um, two days before the sell by date. Um, and I'm sorry, we have to mark them down one day before the sell by date. Uh, but what I started was doing two days because that gives an extra day of people buying uh, food at a lower price. Because if it's marked down one day before, you, you don't want to buy a dollar apple and when you could buy a dollar 10 cents apple for better quality. Um, so giving it that one extra day for a lower cost. So now it's going to be 99 cent apple, you know, versus the dollar five within two days. Um, damage outdated promotional items and unpopular items often get thrown away, especially during the holidays. We get an extreme amount of um, promotional holiday items that will get thrown away because they're not going to be sold because we got so much um, items coming in. And then also damaged products that are dented um, and then specifically produce when they're not very nice looking um, or they're off colored, they have a funny shape, um, they have a bruise, um, those will get thrown away. Uh, the climate change connection, so food loss and waste also exacerbates the climate change crisis with its significant greenhouse gas footprint, production, transportation, and handling of food generate significant carbon dioxide, which is CO2, the emissions and food when food ends up in landfill, it generates methane and even more potent greenhouse gas. Um, here, the EPA estimated that each year U.S. food loss and waste embodies 107 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Um, if food waste was a country, it would be the third largest emitter in the world. Um, also, Las Vegas, we are known as a food desert. If our freeways and highways got shut off, we would only have fresh food for three days. And yet we are throwing away so much of this fresh food. The EPA showed data that food waste is the single most common material landfilled and incinerated in the U.S., comprising 24 and 22% of landfills and combusted municipal solid waste. So here's some more about my experience. Like I said, I've worked at Smith for seven years. I just recently left earlier this year, but I still do the food program. Um, I never was paid to do the food program. I did this all on my own voluntarily. Mm -hmm. um, I started with waste reduction actions. So we just talked about why uh, food gets thrown away. So I looked at those different actions. Um, and I, like I mentioned, I did the two days beforehand, marking down items for a lower price. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the TerraCycle plastic bag recycling program, and then about the food recovery program. Uh, first, I want to highlight the food recovery hierarchy developed by the EPA. Um, it's a system that prioritizes prevention and then diversion of wasted food. So it starts with source reduction. So that's why I started my program with source reduction. 
uh, feed hungry people, feed animals, industrial uses, composting, and then incineration or the landfill. So here's the first um, source reduction, number one on that list. So waste reduction actions I did at the grocery store. Um, we wouldn't do this necessarily as volunteers of Climate Reality Vegas if you weren't working at a grocery store, but if you work at a grocery store, restaurant, um, banquet, anything that really sells food, um, these are some practices you could take. So not overstocking the fresh departments. So bakeries, delis, meats, produce. Um, usually when you're at work, you get a inventory of what items it tells you to, um, to put out on the shelf basically. So you could follow that, um, but you could always display with your best judgment, um, working somewhere for such a long time, you understand that place better than a computer may tell you what to put out on the shelf. Um, and then also what we all could do on our, our part is not expect cosmetic perfection. When you go into a grocery store, you see a funny looking apple, just get it, uh, taste the same. Um, you're gonna prevent that from being getting thrown away. Um, and then don't be afraid to ask for a discount. They will discount it for you um, or sample the item out. Um, lots of grocery stores, if you just ask to eat the banana or apple, um they'll let you but um if it's something like if you're buying like bags of salad that may look not as fresh ask for a, a discount um if you work at the store and you're able to sell it for a cheaper price mark down those items half price um and before the holiday passes like i said we have an extreme amount of things that um get thrown away after the holidays i bet that you've been into a store where they have just cartfuls of holiday things on markdowns. Well, if those don't sell within a few days, it just all gets thrown away. Um, not even donated, even if it's still edible. Um, damage and outdated promotional and unpopular items, bulk them out. So if you have, you know, 10 apples that look funny, bag them all up. Those red bags right here at the bottom, you can see they're all priced for $1. Um, so that's good for people who want to come buy large amounts of produce and get it for a cheaper price. And those are located at every grocery store. Um, and then, like I said, if you find some that you don't think are the best quality and you don't want to pay full price, ask for a red, a red bag. The, so starting the TerraCycle Plastic Bag Program, um, this is an extremely easy program that anybody could do. Um, so basically you set up a recycling bin at a grocery, it could, doesn't even have to be a grocery store. We could do it at a library, a school, your workplace. Um, and you create a free TerraCycle account, just your name, email, and login. Um, you pick out a program. So this one is the Kroger recycling program. So specifically for plastic bags, because we do not recycle plastic bags here in Las Vegas. Do not put plastic bags in, re in your recycling bin. Republic Services does not recycle plastic bags. All of our plastic bags get shipped out to, uh, to other states to be recycled. Um, and this program is the exact same thing. We're shipping our waste somewhere else. Uh, but TerraCycle has a rewards program where you could get money for your nonprofit organization. Um, so anyone who is a member of a nonprofit, including Climate Reality Las Vegas, can earn points towards their um, organization, to your school, whichever. Um, so you sign up for the program, then you collect the items in a recycle bin. You put it in a box after, and then you ship it to TerraCycle. They give you a free um, label. Each shipment is weighed by them once they get it. Um, and you get, right here it says 0 0.01 uh, per point. So that so if, when you equal it out, it's basically two cents for every plastic bag um, that you collect. And two cents adds up a lot, um, you know, one, one plastic bag. Um, but yeah, they give you a prepaid shipping label. It's free, easy. You just collect, ship it out, um, and you get those points. So I have just so, oops, some pictures from that. Um, so this one is the Kroger, our brand's free recycling program. 
the plastic bags do not need to be cleaned. Um, so, and it could be any, anything you can imagine. It can be the bags in from your bacon, from your bags of chips, your juice boxes, um, grocery bags, candy bags, literally any type of plastic. It could be a film. Um, it just can't be a hard plastic, like a water bottle. Those would go in your regular bin. Um, but you can see here, I just have a blue bin. And again, I, I bought this bin on my own with my own money. Uh, Smith didn't help me with anything besides saying, yes, I could put this stuff here. And yes, I could do the program. Um, so here, yeah, I got to a, a, a recycling can. I put some labels on it saying what could go in there um, and the different organizations that you could donate to. Um, I also have these flyers that I created and I put on the newspaper rack um, just as a reminder for anybody shopping at the store that they could take home so they remember next time to bring in their bags. Um, here you could see at the bottom there's two different um, recycling cans. Smith already recycles their bags. Um, that's good. But the TerraCycle program gives you those points that you could redeem um, for nonprofits. And also um, TerraCycle act recycles their bags and makes it into other products. You could look more into that on their website, but like playground material is one of their top things that they um, make out of their recycled plastic. All right, so now the produce food recovery program. When I first started this program, um, it took me a long time, like a few months to get it approved by Smith's management because there's a lot of liability involved because I'm asking them to take out product out of the store um, that I think is still edible. So that's them trusting me not to take product that could actually be sold. Um, that's also, having me tell them that they're not doing it correctly and that they're wasting all this food. So it also comes off as that they're doing something wrong and nobody likes to be told that. Um, so once I got all this approved, so basically I, when I told them, they already know that they have these bad practices with their, um, with their, th with their uh, waste. And so I explained to them basically why I care. Um, I, get very angry when I see them throw away produce. Um, and so you tell them why you care. Um, and then once I got the program approved, I collaborated with local organization to feed animals. I started with that first because I wasn't approved to donate it to um, humans uh, yet because Smith didn't want to be held liable if something happened. Um, and so after a while, a few months after the program, when everything went extremely smooth, um, they granted access for me to do um, different, to feed people. So I donated to Solidarity Fridge in East Las Vegas. It's the community fridge and pantry, if you aren't aware. Um, and then I also partnered with local organizations to compost. Um, and these are just people who have reached out to me individually, messaged me on, uh, social media, notice I do the program, ask for extra scraps. Um, some people have animals in their backyard, um, like horses and chickens, and they want extra produce, so they would just reach out to me. Um, so how you would be able to start your own uh, with Climate Vegas's help, um, I will be helping you along the way with everything. Um, we will go to the store that is closest to your house um, or closest to your work, closest to your school, wherever you're trying to get to. Um, it's gonna be usually early mornings uh, before the store opens. So if a store opens at six, usually you wanna do the program at 5.30 uh, because that is the easiest with the manager's schedules. Um, because they don't want people coming in during store hours, taking a large amount of uh, produce out of the store because they don't want questions asked from other customers. Um, and again, liability issues. So we will need to build their trust. Um, since I've worked at Smith's for seven years, I've been doing this program since 2020. Um, I've been able to 
showcase this to other stores and get those approvals. Um, like I said, we'll talk about climate, community, and responsibility. Sometimes a manager, it depends on who we get. It could be somebody that says yes right away as soon as we bring it to their attention. And sometimes there's multiple hurdles you'd have to get over. Um, and then we'd have to talk to a higher level manager and supervisor. Um, and then we would set a schedule. You would write down your commitments and your schedule. This is on your time. Remember, this is volunteer program. You do what works best for you. I do it. I used to do it three days a week. Um, I shorten it down to two. I do it on Tuesdays and Fridays at 5.30 in the morning. Um, when I go on vacation, I let the organization know. They come and pick it up. So that's next step. Number three is to collab with the organization. So you can communicate with one of them, um, someone you know. If you know an organization that needs um, produce, um, or I have a list already ready to go of people who are in line, basically waiting for more volunteers to be helped. Um, and you would organize the, the process. Do you want the items to be picked up or do you wanna distribute them yourself? So if you go to the store at say, if this, like for me, I go to the store, I get there at 5.20 in the morning, I go in, I sort through the produce scraps, takes me 10 minutes. I meet the person um, of the organization in front of the store at 5.30, load it up into their car, and then we both go on our separate ways. Um, or some days when I donate to the Solidarity Fridge, I still meet that uh, animal organization in front of my store at 5.30, give them the non-edible food scraps, and then I, give, then I drive to the Solidarity Fridge um, and donate the rest. Like I said, it's up to you, whatever organization, um, individual is close to your house, whatever store is close to your house. Um, I've been saying Smith's grocery store because that's the one I'm most familiar with. I know their layouts of the stores. I know their managers. Um, that would be the easiest store for me to get the approval with. So if we could stick with that, that would be the best. Um, so look on your Google Maps to see where you could stop by. Um, if you have a store near you. If not, I'm sure we could work something out. Um, and then when you have basically all the planning out of the way, the, the you know first three steps, then you start the program and you start sorting. You sort th through the produce, edibles go to feed people, and the non-edibles, which is the scraps, go to feed animals. Um, like I said, it took me a while to get this program approved um, because of liability, but we have the Federal Bill Immersion Good Samaritan Food Donation Act, which lets you donate food um, and grocery products to organizations and individuals in need. This law protects you from liability when you donate to a nonprofit organization. It protects you from civil and criminal liability should you should the product donated in good faith later cause harm to their substance? So when Smith told me I couldn't donate to animals, it was because if, I mean, sorry, if I wasn't able to donate to people, um, it was because if that person got sick from something I donated, they could sue the store and then my program would stop. I've had absolutely no issues with the organizations I've collaborated with, um, but if a problem were to occur, this act would cover me and the grocery store. Um, it standardizes donor liability exposure. You or your legal counsel do not need to investigate liability laws in 50 states and blah, blah, blah. Basically, we are allowed to donate um, out of the goodness of our hearts. That's because that's what we're doing. So once we have the program, already in place and you're ready to start and go into the store, I've kind of put together a few steps on what exactly that looks like, just so you have an idea. Um, so step one is you find the trash cart. Um, pretty easy. Here on the left, you can see this is what it looks like. That is a ton of trash right there that is going to be thrown away. Um, so some days it looks like this. Some days there's only a few crates. It really depends on the day and how much waste they have. Um, so here, this video is plain. I only got two boxes one day um, and there's the rest of the trash. So when I sort through the produce, I do wear gloves. Um, 
sometimes I wear gloves <laughs> um, or sometimes I just wash my hands because there is mixed stuff in the produce. People throw away their lunch. Um, people dust the floors and they put the, you know, in there it's going to be a mix of things. You don't, some people don't want it to touch moldy produce, um, you know, necessarily. So step two is collect and sort your scraps. On the left-hand side, you could see the non-edibles, um, which I just call food scraps that could be donated to animal organizations or even people who want to compost. So these are things like loose salad, um, because when we stock the shelves at grocery stores, you have to pick off the first uh, layer of salad to make the nice layers. Um, and then any leafy grains, really, um, and any produce that doesn't have casein on it. Um, sometimes like you don't wanna wash everything for organizations, don't wanna wash everything that you give them. So they, some might only want prepackaged, um, but some might take those loose materials. It depends on you and the organization on what you wanna do. Um, and you could pick an organization and you only have to do one or the other. You don't have to do both types of food scraps. Um, each time you go. So most of the time I donate it to the animal organization and I give them everything, even if it's for human consumption because I don't have that time in my schedule every day to uh, donate to people. Um, and then on the right, you could see different um, packaged items, veggie trays and salad kits um, that it would feel better for people to be able to to eat that because they know it hasn't been opened um, or touched. Step three, once you organize all your crates, um, you're going to reorganize the one you just took all apart um, and sweep up the floor um, just because this grocery store is letting us do this and we need to keep their area clean. It's very kind to clean up after yourself. And then of course, you're gonna stack your um, donations evenly right here. So right here on the right side, you could see those black crates. Those um, are reusable crates at the grocery stores that we are able to use. So basically, and I also use boxes at the grocery store. So we don't have to bring anything inside except for some, um, we could ask the grocery store, we could use their shopping carts, but like my store won't let me use their shopping carts. So I have to bring um, in my own dolly. Here I'm borrowing one of the bakery carts because like I said, I work there. So I know people, so I just borrow their stuff. Um, but once we get the program at stores that we don't have those connections with, um, we're going to need to get funding for some dollies. Um, and I have an extra one. So if anybody wants, you know, immediately to start a program, I have one that you could borrow until we get those additional funds for some more. Um, and it, it was, it's $50 for one that folds in your car. So $50 is a small price to pay, um, you know, if, if you want to do it individually. Um, so step number five, after everything is clean and organized is distribution. So like I said, it could either be picked up or dropped off. Um, here, I just put some pictures of the car that I've been filling. I should have put some pictures of the solidarity fridge, but I didn't think of that till just now. Um, and like I said, it's depending on what you want to collaborate with the organization. If you already have some you're um, already a member of um, or ones that are in need, um, and then you would just keep in contact with them, talk about schedule changes, holidays, running late and reminders. So some days I switch up the days of the week I pick up because of my work schedule. Um, if I run late because I slept over my alarm, if I just don't feel good and I don't wanna do it that day, I will let them know. Um, when I go out of town, of course, you know, you just have to be in contact with those organizations. Um, and then some need reminders, some people need reminders. So tomorrow I have food scraps. So I could text um, my friend, Tommy, who does the pickup and be like, hey, Tommy, tomorrow's food scraps. Um, just because it's so early in the morning, you want those people to set um, an alarm. And also don't be, there's gonna be a day where somebody oversleeps and they don't show up, um, but always have a backup plan. So I've done that before or, someone's tire um, gets pop and they can't meet you. So always have like backup plan. Um, you could always take it to that organization. I could, I do that sometimes when um, they aren't available as well. 
Um, next step, we have our in-person, just hands-on next week. So you could come in. So all those things I just showed you, you'll just follow me um, into the Smiths and I will show you basically where the setup is. I also have um, posters created. Um, so when you're ready to start your own program, we will get that permission, of course, for you. We will work together through all the steps um, I just talked about. Um, and then if you want to attend these in-person trainings next week, um, I'll drop the link in the chat in one moment. Um, or if Cassie could do that, that would be fantastic. Uh, but it's gonna be next Tuesday, Friday, and the Tuesday after at 5.15 a.m. I did check, there's only one slot available for each one. Um, but if you go to that date and you see that it's already full, um, please text me if you're dedicated and want to come because I can take on more people. So basically we'll meet at the Smiths on Tropicana and Wallapai. Um, the actual address is on the website or this link right here you could see. Um, so we'll meet at the store at 515 and then I'll give you the rundown. We'll go into the store. Um, I'll show you how to sort through the produce. You can see firsthand how much waste is that day, um, exactly what you're getting your hands into. Cause like I said, some days it could be dirty. There might be a lot of um, trash that you just don't want to touch. Um, but most of the time it's not, it's not bad. If you're not digging through a dumpster, like I, I showed you uh, the trash is usually in boxes on crates and you just sort through it um, and be on your merry way. Nobody bothers you. Um, you would be friendly with the produce team. They're already there in the morning, um, get to know them. Uh, because they will become your friends because you'll see them and um, eventually they'll start to get excited too and then they'll start they'll know your day so like on Tuesdays when I go um, they know I go and so now they'll put some stuff aside for me or be like oh I missed you yesterday where were you and they were like I had you know five boxes of lettuce, you know? Um, so they'll start to get more excited. And like I said, I do it two days a week, but it's up to you. You could do it one day a week. You could do it two times a month, um, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, we will go over it. Um, and as long as you have that proper signage at the grocery store, so as long as you commit to, okay, Wednesday or the third Wednesday of every month, and we have that on there, they will know that you'll be there every Wednesday. Um, that way, if you go into the store and there's new management or a new produce team um, and they don't really understand why you're there digging through their trash, um, you could tell them, you know, why you're part of the program, show them the signage just so you have that extra, um, you know, security basically. And I just want to thank you all for coming and listening about uh, food recovery. Um, mostly produce recovery. I do um, ask the bakery sometimes. They have a lot of stuff like cookies and pies and rolls. So when I know I'm going to the solidarity fridge, I ask them. Um, and if you're comfortable too, you could ask the other departments who are there at that time. But produce is the biggest waste um, and the most easy to organize really. Um, but I will be with you, you know, throughout the entire process. Please ask any questions um, and stay in touch with me. Here's my contact information. Um, you could also follow me on social media. It's just my name, Olivia Burns. Um, and don't, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. But I see there's some in the chat, so I'll go to the chat right now. And Olivia, I think most of the-, the Oh, comments, I see, okay. Yeah, I, and I, I actually wanna add a couple things too. First of all, awesome presentation. And uh, I want to like emphasize that the Emerson Act that Olivia was talking about, um, the the whole premise behind that is like she was saying that we're doing this in good faith. So we're 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 doing our best to ensure that the food that we're recovering is um, safe food to eat, right? So that's why um, trying to scale this up in a way that is safe for everybody, uh, which is why we. Um, are doing these trainings with Olivia over the next few weeks and more dates will come up or, or message Olivia if they're full. If you want Olivia, I can open up a couple additional slots if, if that works, but um, they'll be kind of in the following weeks as well on Tuesdays and Fridays. But, you know, to ensure that 
you know, something like the Emerson Act doesn't, you know, get taken away or doesn't, you know, gets a bad name and doesn't get to be able to be utilized um, in some places or isn't something that we can rely on. We want to make sure that we are doing our best to recover food in good faith and kind of teach the others that are getting involved exactly what it means and what to look for when it comes to, um, to uh, good edible produce versus uh, not fit for consumption. Um, and then I also wanted to clarify about the, uh, or just add to the um, topic about the conversations about talking with managers. Like Olivia said, um, the goal is for you, is like basically step one, we figure out what volunteers and what people are interested in partaking into this, into this um, program you all identify, hey, this is the Smiths that I would like to go to and recover from because it's close to my house or close to my work or whatever works, like Olivia was saying. We have those conversations with the managers. Um, Olivia's got a great deck put together and kind of knows how to approach the Smiths team. Um, and so it's that's kind of where we come in to help with that process in knowing kind of like how to approach and how to have those conversations so that um, so that we can get, get that implemented. Um, and I wanted to also mention, and Olivia, correct me if I'm wrong, that since you already have a relationship set up with that specific Smith and you're recovering on say Tuesdays and Fridays, but if somebody wanted to recover on the first Wednesday of every month, they could tag, tag along to the Smith that you're working. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. If you want to come any days, you know, I am doing it Tuesdays, Fridays. If you want to come any other days, um, that would be great. And so that would be like a uh, way to get involved more immediately and not having to wait for us to have those conversations with the local managers and then have that be approved by corporate and all that. Because as all of these explained, there's a little bit of a process that goes behind that and approval um, with that. So if you're like, hey, I really want to just like start doing this right now, like I definitely want to start doing it at the Smiths that's by my house. But in the meantime, I don't mind driving a few miles to go to the one where we already have a relationship set up. There's 30 or 31 days out of the month where there's multiple um, boxes of produce every single day that is there that is able to be captured. So, I mean, if, you know, 10 people took one day each month and just said, hey, I'm going to drive a little out of my way, that's, that could be a possible like first step if you're willing to do that. And obviously if you live on the other side of town, probably a whole different story, but like, I don't live too far from that Smith's, for example. So like I could piggyback off that while we're working on building a relationship with the Smith's that's closer to my house. Um, yeah, that's a, that's an excellent point. Um, I don't live next to that Smith. I used to, and I moved, uh, so I pass another Smith. You know, on the way to get to that one, but I already have that program um, at that one. But yeah, that would be excellent. If anybody wanted to hop on that one, like Cassie said, we already have it established um, and those connections, um, and you would want to feel comfortable doing it. Um, you know, let me know. Cool. And one last thing I was going to say too, is that kind of to, um, Olivia had mentioned that the, you can either take the produce and bring it to a local organization, or you can have the organization meet you at the grocery store, right? Like that would be, that would be obviously really helpful too, because then you're not driving all around, but either one works. So the question like that I had in my head that I figured some people might have is why do we still need to be there? And then if the organization is coming to pick it up, why can't the organization just pick it up from the grocery store themselves? And the reason is this training, this knowledge of like kind of what are the steps and building those relationships like Olivia was talking about. And once you build those relationships and people get to know your face, then, um, then, then you know, you, it builds a stronger program. And so it might not always be the same organization that's coming to pick up from you. Like Olivia was saying, sometimes it's food scraps, sometimes it's food that's going to solidarity or another, another nonprofit. And so you're that recognizable face. You're the person that knows, um, kind of, um, that they expect and that know that that's gone through this training with Olivia going there and knowing what's edible, what's not, and all of that. So that's kind of like a question that popped in my head, like, oh, if the organization can come pick it up, why can't, why can't they just come pick it up on their own? We act as somebody that helps to sort what's edible and not edible and prepare it for them to just load up in their car and take with them wherever, or we take it to them if they wanted. But um, that's kind of where we're kind of a um, sorter and transporter or just sorter if needed um, to ensure that we really are donating in good faith and um, 
and also respecting the relationships with the stores that are allowing us to do this in their in their locations. So now I see some questions coming in. So I'll hand it over back to you, Olivia. Sounds good. And I just wanted to point out that I know it's early, 5.30 in the morning, um, you know, wake up an hour beforehand, get ready, drive to the store. Some days you're not going to want to do it. Um, I certainly don't some days. I know it's very hard to get up super early. Um, but afterwards, I do it. It is so relieving and uplifting and encouraging. Um, I feel very productive and inspired after I do it um, because I know I'm helping that organization in need because animal organizations or even uh, community fridges, nonprofits, they could spend hundreds of dollars in groceries um, weekly to feed their animals and their people. Um, and with this program, this organization for the last few years hasn't had to pay anything for groceries for their animals. Um, and I know that all the food from Solidarity Fridge um, gets eaten. And so you you are making a huge difference when you do this and you certainly feel like a rock star after. Um, and the, the organization that you do it with is certainly gonna appreciate you as well. And you develop that, um, that friendship with them. Um, so Pam asked, why does Republic Services not process plastic bags? Pam, great question. Um, and we should take it up with them. <laughs> um, they just don't have the facility facility to do so. Uh, recycling plastic bags is a different um, whole process. And the recycling center here does not have that equipment um, needed to do so. So we do recycle other hard plastics, but not actual plastic bags. Um, and you could donate your plastic bags to any grocery store um, and we ship it out um, through a third party. It's not Republic Services, um, but those do go out of state. Um, TerraCycle, same thing. You would collect the bags um, and then you would ship it um, and then they would recycle it. Um, and then it was asked why, Oh, so we know that plastic needs to be cleaned um, when it comes to TerraCycle. Why doesn't the bags need to be cleaned? Um, kind of basically what I just said is that it's a whole different process recycling plastic bags and film than it is hard plastics. Um, we know our plastics here um, need to be clean and dry before we put them in our, in our bin because that's how the facility and infrastructure and equipment work at public services. Um, but when you recycle plastic bags, it's a different process. Um, and from what I've seen in the videos I have watched is basically they just melt it all down. Um, so it could be not necessarily 100% clean. Um, I could link you to the TerraCycle video that explains their process. I actually have, um, if you're doing the in-person training, anybody, I have a binder. Um, actually, I put together and it shows the TerraCycle process uh, that I put together for customers when I talk when I used to talk to them about um, recycling plastic bags, and it basically shows you how they do it, um, the, the points you get back um, and the entire process, but you could also find all that information on their website. Um, yeah, Cassie, they do get caught in our machines. So it's, um, you're not even supposed to bag your recycles when you put it in uh, your recycle bin. So um, just, collect your um, recycle your bags and bring it to the grocery store. I have, that's all I do. Like I have so much, like, unfortunately I do have a lot of plastic bags, big chip person, uh, my household. So it's always chips, chips, chips. So collecting those chip bags and putting them in um, the recycling can at Smith's. Um, so Smith's says it only accepts regular plastic bags you get from the grocery store. Um, but you could actually put in literally any bag in there. Um, they might not take the dirty ones like uh, TerraCycle does, um, but our store um, has the TerraCycle program and you could start it at the store you do the food program with uh, because it's you know two things in one, um, or you could do it at your workplace, um, your um, anywhere really, library, um, 
restaurant, wherever, you know, that wants to do it. Um, and I'm excited that you signed up for the in-person. That's awesome. Um, yes, yeah, Target Albertsons, you could bring the plastic film there. Um, do you know about the blue recyclable bags? Um, I'm not too sure about the blue recyclable bags. Is it like a certain type of bag? Is it like the ones you put your produce in? Um, okay, let me see this link. Is this the oh, link? No, that's, oh, that's, that's something different. different. Oh, no, okay. I just Googled but recyclable bags and is it like, is it like, yeah, they're like trash bags. Like you buy like hefty garbage bags at the store, but instead of like, instead of them being like regular ones, they're blue and they say they're recyclable. That is weird. I, I guarantee you that's just greenwashing because that's the whole thing. This is what I just Googled, Olivia, if you want to look at it. The whole thing about the plastic film is exactly what we were mentioning earlier, that the the, the, the thin plastic film gets stuck at the, and actually we're trying to coordinate a recycling center tour soon, but at the recycling center, it's like sorted out. And what happens is the film gets stuck in the sorting or the whatever processes the recycling. And so it being a different material kind of, or even blue or whatever, isn't going to help that. It's like the fact that it's so, it's the thin thing that gets wrapped up in the machine. That's, that's the issue with why it's not recyclable. And like going back to why public doesn't, um, recycle it. I mean, they, they absolutely could, if it was, it would just be a different stream, right? Like you would have, they would either have to have different machinery that was able to sort out the plastic film, or they just would tell people to put, like they could set up their own, like basically TerraCycle stations and send it to TerraCycle if they wanted and make money off of it, you know? So, um, but it's not an awkward thing to them for them, probably obviously, but I don't know. What do you think, Olivia? Those bags just look like they're just- Yeah, they wouldn't, they can go in our regular recycling, um, but if you bring it to a grocery store, you could definitely recycle it. Um, dog food bags, um, juice boxes, even though they're sort of a hard plastic, um, they still could be recycled in the TerraCycle program um, without the straw. Um, so that's that's pretty good for TerraCycle to do that. Um, and they're, output product when you return it to TerraCycle is mostly playground equipment is what they make. That's what I've seen from their website. Um, and you get points for your, your bag. So two cents per plastic bag. Um, and that's, that's, pr that's pretty good. It adds up fast. I've think I've gotten over $400, um, for organizations and there's only two, um, periods a year where you could uh, reclaim your um, your points basically um, just a, that doesn't really matter much but um I'm very excited to start this or expand this program more I've been trying to work on that for ever since I started it and it was extremely difficult to do by myself but now that I have an organization and Cassie's help um, and everybody else, is help. I think that we could do this. Um, and like I said, it's on your own time. Um, don't feel pressure to start immediately or next week during the in-person um, trainings. Um, so you could reach out to me in a month or three months from now and be like, hey, I'm ready, you know, um, and just look up a store near you, preferably a Smith's. Um, and message me and tell me, hey, this is the store closest to my house. Um, tell me your availability or your commitment. If it's two days a week, if it's every Friday, um, every Saturday, does it, you know, you could do it on the weekends too. Um, and then we could go talk to that store and get you started. Um, and like I said, please don't hesitate to reach out, uh, social media, uh, email, my phone number. Um, you could get it from somebody if you don't have it or if you didn't write it down from that presentation. Um, but other than that, thank you all so much. And if anybody has any final questions, please go ahead and ask away. Nobody, that sounds good. All right, well, everybody, um, you could sign up for the upcoming training. And like I said, if a day you see 
is already too full um, and you would like to do that day, please text me. My number is on that list and we will coordinate something. And if none of those dates work for you, totally understandable. Um, again, shoot me a message and we could coordinate something together. Um, so thank you everybody. And this meeting is recorded. It'll be up on YouTube and also um, we'll be posting it in the Climate Hub so you could see it there. So thank you all. Thank you, Cassie. And everybody have a safe weekend. Thanks everyone. See you later. Bye, everybody. Thank you.